Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, black and a red or Grixis colored additional upkeep step deck thanks to Obika Splitter of Seconds, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This 4 mana 2-5 has a menace and whenever it deals combat damage to a player we get that many additional upkeep steps after this phase. So any cards that trigger at the beginning of our upkeep will get a lot better with Obika as our commander. Now it does require Obika to survive for a whole turn and get an attack step in, where the opponent hopefully doesn't have too many blockers to get in the way, so it's not the easiest commander to enable, therefore I don't expect it to be the best commander out there, but hopefully should still be a lot of fun. So I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with a few ways to give Obika haste, which will make it a lot easier for Obika to come down and immediately connect to give us a lot of value, and some of these also give Obika an extra point of power, which will give us a third additional upkeep step as opposed to just two. Then we've got some mana acceleration, mostly in the form of a ramp artifacts to kind of help cast our more expensive spells, makes it easier to replay our commander if it does get removed once or twice. And speaking of removal, we've got a whole bunch of spot removal ourselves. Some of these can also hit artifacts, even an enchantment with Feed the Swarm. So these are just very efficient removal spells. And we also get to play with some of the commands. Prismari Command and Kologans Command are going to be pretty good in Brawl, since there tend to be a lot of artifacts worth taking out. Then moving on, we've got Sweepers and Counter Spells, which now also include Mana Drain. So expect to see that in every blue Brawl deck going forward. And then finally we get to the fun section, which are the cards that actually benefit from additional upkeep steps. So these will be great with Obika hitting the opponent. And then finally we've got the miscellaneous section, which are more individually powerful cards that uh, include Cruel Ultimatum, which is another new addition that will be a lot of fun to cast in Grix's decks going forward. So now for the deep dive, starting with our haste enablers, which include the Lava Spur Boots. So it gives one extra power, haste, and award one. So a little bit of protection as well. Not quite as good as Hexproof on the Swiftwood Boots, but the one extra power can certainly matter, and it's also a little cheaper to play. And then of course we've got the Swiftfoot Boots as well, the only other boots we have on Arena that give some sort of protection and haste. And then Rising of the Day, giving our creatures haste, and legendary creatures also get one extra power. And then our mana acceleration includes that two mana Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. And then at three mana, both Midnight Clock and Replicating Ring have great synergy with Obika, Midnight Clock eventually drawing us a fresh hand, and Replicating Ring giving us a ton of extra mana with those replicated ring tokens. So these are also great in this deck. And then we have As Foretold, an enchantment. So this one doesn't technically generate extra mana right away, but takes a little while to get going. But then once we get enough counters on it, it helps us cast spells for free, both in our turn and the opponent's turn, with mana value equal to or less than the number of counters on it. So if we get it going with Obika, it can also speed up the process in which we can uh, cast those expensive spells for free. And then rounding out this section, we've got the Celestis, Horn Power Stone, and Firemind Vessel. Again, you'll notice I'm not playing any of the digital-only cards, otherwise you could play Key to the Archive in that slot as well. And then our removal includes Cut Down, we've got Fatal Push, and then we've got some Hand Disruption with Duress and Thoughtseize. A Lightning Bolt, always nice to have. And then at 2 mana, Feed the Swarm to hit enchantments alongside creatures. Go for the Throat and Heartless Act, tend to deal with whatever creature you need to take out. And then a Braid can also take out artifacts. Molten Collapse, kind of an all-purpose removal spell for creatures and planeswalkers. And then we've got Prismari Command and Colagans Command, which are also quite versatile, often taking out an artifact and maybe drawing cards or making the opponent discard. And then our counter spells include Wash Away as a one-mana answer to opposing commanders, Cyclonic Rift to bounce all their stuff back if we overload it, we've got Negate to protect Obika, counter spell and then now also mana drain which is a better counter spell that can potentially give us a lot of extra colorless mana and then our sweepers include brothers and sweltering suns and languish could easily play a few more but i've chosen these because they don't take out our own commander so we can still have obika on the battlefield cast a languish and hopefully wipe the opponent's board and then we get to the fun section here, cards that benefit from additional upkeep steps. Dragon Master Outcast with six lands in play can make a 5-5 dragon token at the beginning of our upkeep. We've got Search for Ascanta transforming into the Sunken Ruin can give us a lot of card selection in the meantime and eventually card advantage if we activate it. Bitter Blossom making a 1-1 rogue tokens. We've got Call of the Ring drawing us extra cards and then uh, making a ring bearer which also makes it harder for the opponent to block Obika. 
Good for X and Arena drawing cards at the cost of life. Then we've got a cycle of these legendary shrines, the Hondon of Infinite Rage dealing damage, Hondon of Knight's Reach making the opponent discard, and Hondon of Seeing Winds will draw cards. These also get better the more of them we have on the battlefield, but also benefit from Obika, of course. Then Kumena's Awakening will first draw an extra card at the beginning of our upkeep for each player, but once we reach the City's Blessing, it turns into kind of a personal Howling Mine. Then we've got Twilight Prophets, which can deal the opponent a bunch of damage while drawing us extra cards at the beginning of our upkeep. It's also very powerful. And then a Patient Rebuilding can also draw us multiple cards per upkeep by milling the opponents, and for every land we mill, we draw. We've got the Dracosaur, which can also provide a bunch of card advantage, Dinosaur tokens, and Treasure tokens at the same time. Temporal Anchor lets us scry two cards to the bottom, which we essentially draw each turn, so that can also be very powerful. Charmbreaker Devils gets back instants and sorceries from our graveyard, while also potentially killing the opponent in a few attacks. And Zenithar can play the opponent's stuff off the top of their deck. We've got Shieldroots making the opponent sacrifice, whereas we get to return a creature in our upkeep. And that's similar to Virtue of Persistence, if we cast the enchantment half, the sorcery can also take out a smaller creature. And finally, Portal to Phyrexia, making the opponent sack three creatures, and then bringing back any creature at the beginning of our upkeep, can also help reanimate the opponent's stuff. And then the miscellaneous section includes Expressive Iteration, just a nice two for one if we cast it later in the game. Good Fable providing card selection, and then the Shaman making extra mana. Haven't seen it in standard for a while, but still incredibly powerful. Then there's Chandra, which can also take out opposing creatures while generating additional mana to help ramp out our expensive spells. Nicol Bolas can make the opponent discard and then transform into a Planeswalker. We've got Time Warp to take an extra turn, which in turn hopefully gives us even more upkeep steps. And then a Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, another payoff for playing the Grixis Callers. Now alongside Cruel Ultimatum, target opponent sacrifices a creature, discards three cards, loses five life. Then we get to return a creature from our graveyard to hand, draw three, and gain five life. So what's not to like? And then our mana base has lots of dual lands for fixing, also playing all the fetch lands we can get our hands on, including shock lands and then the new surveil lands to search up. So these are also quite nice to get early, giving us a bit more card selection. And then most of the dual lands you've come to expect in a brawl deck. And then uh, the channel lands offering a tiny bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing Shanna, a life gain deck. And our hand seems acceptable. Don't have any mana acceleration, but some useful tools to interact. And then we already have double black for Fraxin Arena. Now we've got some ramp as well. Okay, Expressive Iteration could be the play, or we can just get the Fraxin Arena out there. There's a chance they have enchantment removal, but the longer we wait on iteration, the better it gets, because then we're not forced to grab a land. And then if they play Shana, I could maybe go Iteration plus Virtue. Yeah, sure, as long as we hit an untapped land, that works, and we still have one in hand. Alright, hit two lands, so Pathway in hand. Exile Haunted Ridge. And Virtue to clean up Shanna. And then next turn, could keep developing my mana with Vessel, play a tap land. Or we could maybe try Obika. Oracle of the Alphas next. Not a disaster if that stays in play for a turn. Okay, Midnight Clock. Could play another 3 drop afterwards. Or I just go for Obika, although they have a mana available for either Wash Away or something like Swords to Plowshares. Now Path to Exile is also in the format. So maybe prefer going for Firemind Vessel and develop my mana some more. And play Theater. Negates the I'm happy to keep as a way to protect Obika. Okay, Protector Shield It's going to make Obika a little bit less impactful since it will only damage them for one. So we only get one extra upkeep, so a braid seems like the way to go here. But I can still play Obika for now 
and then they might not care to remove it right away. So play Obika and then pass with maybe a, a braid and negate. Opponent did have the wash away, so now I'm forced to negate. And then let's see here. Whenever you or another permanent you control, so I can take out Valkmira right now if I'd like, or I can wait until end of turn. Even though there's a chance they can uh, counter my abrade. Shield would also kind of stop my Honden from doing anything. Ancestral Recall, so they actually drew the recall right away. That's lucky. Draw three, yeah, can't stop that. That's why people play Oracle, I guess. Now Reservoir. Could also braid that, but I think the Protector Shield's more annoying. And we'll respond to the Sentinel. So we can cast Brother's End to clear a path. And then it's just a matter of which additional upkeep triggers we want to enable. Kumina's Awakening can draw a bunch, but we probably want to start with Brother's End to deal with the Sentinel. And then, yeah, Kumina's Awakening looks good. So we'll get to draw off Rex in Arena and off Kumino's Awakening. And we can still duress, perfect. And Memory Lapse, Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, both are annoying, but I guess it's easier to play around Disdainful Stroke by just not playing four drops. And Prismari Command, another answer to Reservoir, put on top deck the Day of Judgment, that's too bad. But we have the boots to give Obika haste in the future. Although now I guess they have this Daneful Stroke and they're ready for it. So we'll need to take a slightly different approach. Also could have considered leaving Obika in the graveyard for Virtue of Persistence. Cruel Ultimatum would be fun to cast. So maybe we want to bait out Disdainful Stroke here with the Charmbreaker Devils. So it could go Replicating Ring plus Devils or Devils first and then equip it with the Boots if they let it resolve. And that works. I'm not in danger of dying to the Reservoir. And then, sure, we can go Replicating Ring plus Boots. And then next turn we have a bunch of options, including Cruel Ultimatum. I guess they do get to draw off Reservoir end of turn here. Okay. But if they're tapped out, then uh, they'll have to discard those cards right away. So not hitting my spots. Have to be a little careful that we don't die to our own Phyrexian Arena. But uh, yeah, let's start with Cruel Ultimatum maybe. First time casting it in Brawl, so that's always exciting. Get back our Devils, draw a bunch. And then we probably want to deal with the Reservoir. I could also Sweltering Suns deal with Shanna. Yeah, I guess Shanna is the more problematic card here. Uh, or I could Prismari Commands, making Treasure. Destroy an Artifact. And then we should still be able to Sweltering Suns. So we deal with both. And then next turn with a clear board, we can 
pick whichever creature we want to give haste to with the boots and take it from there. Could have also discarded the Devils to set up our Virtue of Persistence, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Jodzi, so blue-green ramp. And uh, we've got a Keeper. Iron Crag allows us to play Boots in the same turn, setting up Obika with haste at some point. Or we can just play the Boots on turn one. Also could have considered just playing a tapped Sulphur Falls, since it might come into play tapped later at this point. Opponent with a Lenor Elves, and keeps up two mana. So I don't think Obika's gonna resolve if I play it here, so instead I can just Heartless Act the Lenor Elves and then play our tap lanes. Right, opponent's got a Veil of Summer. Pretty nice. Somewhat conditional in nature. You're not always gonna find someone playing blue or black, but it lined up pretty well. All right, Honden was a good draw since currently if we play Obika, there's no benefit to getting an additional upkeep. So prefer playing with the Honden first. And then maybe next turn we'll get to draw additional cards. This and into the Royal to bounce. So our opponent now with six mana. A regrowth will put those lands into play untapped thanks to Spelunking. We found the boots. Alright, could go for the devils, or we can just replay Honden, which is maybe harder for them to interact with. And gets counterspelled. And now key to the archive, getting one of the spellbook cards. And they got rid of a C double, so they still have that uh, archive card in hand. Cyclonic Rift, not looking too amazing here. So, how about we play the Devils? Opponent going for Jonesy. Get to untap. Get back Heartless Act. Okay, so we've got options now. Probably start with. Heartless Act Jonesy. Trigger the Devils. Opponent's gonna pick it back up. And then we can still play Obika, give it haste. Which will re-trigger the Devils. Alright. Abundant Harvest. Name's Land. And Time Warp to take an extra turn, so that's the card they got off Key to the Archive. Luckily not the most devastating Time Warp. So we'll see what our opponent can come up with here. Barl's expertise, bouncing stuff back. And then a free journey, although not quite the desired effect, so they probably should have declined. Okay, so do not have a lane to play, unfortunately, so can give the Devils haste. Could get some additional upkeeps, but they don't do much. So instead, probably just develop our mana with Iron Crag. Can still play Obika. And then equip it with the boots just to hit for three. And then maybe next turn attack with hasty Charmbreaker Devils. 
recovery, getting back into the royal. And they're just gonna cast it now. The elf attacks. Okay. So I have the mana to play devils, give it a haste, but not quite do anything else. Could also just take out the elf and replay Obika, which I'm also fine with. So maybe start there. Their opponent's at 7, and pour over the pages to draw 3, untap 2 lanes. They had to discard an overflowing insight, so they must have some good cards in hand. Currently they have, let's see, 5, 6, 7, so they could overload a Cyclonic Rift if they have one, which is a reason not to necessarily play Charmbreaker Devils here. I've got my own Cyclonic Rift. Then again, what else am I doing if I'm not playing the Devils? Yeah, sure. Right, it's gonna be Sublime Epiphany. Okay. So they get to counter... ...and bounce. And then we can play the other boots now. One with a multiverse is a good one. So they can still cast a spell for free. Although only from hand, so they wouldn't be able to play their commander. And they went for a halfling. Okay, so we could Cyclonic Rift one with a multiverse. Do we have enough blue mana to play Obika and keep up mana drain? One, two, three, four total. So that could work. Don't think I want to overload it. And then I can still equip the boots. Let's make it swift foot this time so we actually have hex proof for once. Pass it back. Maybe I should have actually transformed Iron Crag. Mana Drain one with a multiverse, it's not legendary, so Halfling couldn't have made it uncounterable. And then next turn I could attack for three. And just an island to draw. So all this colorless mana is gonna go to waste. I guess we'll use Access Tunnel. So yeah, with the uh, transformed Iron Crag, we might have been able to get there. Extra upkeep doesn't do anything. And uh, should maybe Heartless Act the Halfling or just cast Languish. Keep Heartless Act for Jotzi. Alright. What can our opponent do here? The one ring? Okay. So that'll keep them alive. Also means we won't be able to get an extra upkeep next turn. And our opponent is at two, so the ring is eventually gonna get them if they can gain any life. And there's a journey. Take our turn. Just another land. Alright, I'll attack just because I can. And pass it back. Opponent falls to one. And are they gonna die to their own ring? Opponent draws. It's their last chance. And replays Jodzi. And 
now I solve the equation. Alright, I guess we'll heartless act in response. And then if they can find a way to gain more life, they could still be alright here. So they've got six mana. The River's Rebuke is not going to be good enough since we can just replay Obika and attack. And then it would still die to the ring. So it's going to be something a little different. Titanius Command can gain life potentially. Seven cards in Graveyard. They're going to target their own Graveyard, which is a little bit more full. Alright, I guess they found a way here. Back up to 22. So they really want something that works with our upkeep step to try and pull ahead. Twilight Prophet counts. Can give that one haste with the Swiftfoot Boots, keep the extra power on Obika. So three upkeep steps, that's a big hit. Another three damage, and another three, put him down to four. And then we can still play some spells out, including Virtue to get back Charmbreaker Devils. I guess never mind, we're a little short of casting the enchantment half. So it's going to be Power Stone plus Honden. Don't have the mana to move my boots. So put him down to two now. So yeah, seeing the power of just one attack step with one of these upkeep triggers. There's the River's Rebuke, so they had it in hand after all. Up the Beanstalk draws. So they're currently still dying to their own ring, so they need to find a solution. They have five mana. Eureka moments. Finds Lotus Field. Untapped thanks to Spelunking, so it was actually a pretty nice hit. So still five mana remaining. Although that's assuming they want to go down to one with the Wooded Foothills. Traverse. Can't quite find any creature they like since they exiled their own graveyard earlier. And Virtue getting back a land. Opponent's getting a lot of value of Jotzi at least. Now Harrow getting more untapped lands. Hour of Promise. I don't think there's any deserts that gain life. So our opponent's having quite the turn. But question is, can they answer their own ring? And stop maybe a hasty Obika. Mystic Sanctuary can put something back, although Time Warp is gone. It goes for Seagate Restoration, maybe. Also counts as a land for Jonesy. Alright, so we'll see where this ends up. Opponent is taking a lot of game actions. Can now play Kellen to maybe block with as well. It's fast with Surge. So we still have at least four mana left. Opponent goes digging. The One Ring is indestructible, so even Kellen cannot take it out. Looks like we get to untap, and Prismari commands would be lethal. So let's see, if they counter Prismari commands, I can still play Twilight Prophets, suited up and attack. So, maybe start there. And hit you for two. 
opponent cycles Lorian revealed and explodes. All right, they definitely put up a fight. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Hamza, green-white plus one counters. Our hand is ambitious, but could work out. Search for Skanta, pretty good with Obika, if we can quickly fill the graveyard. The Surveil from Sewers also helps. And as you'll notice, Ascanta now also mentions Surveil, which uh, wasn't a keyword that was commonly used back then. I do want to keep lines on top. So we'll start with Cold Steel Heart, maybe play Obika on 3. And then Ascanta can immediately take advantage of it. We will eventually need triple black for ultimatum, but we already have plenty of black mana. So I think we want additional blue for now. Opponent's got a Mystic. And hopefully Obika gets to untap here. And then Patient Rebuilding could be a nice one to get additional upkeep steps. Or we can double spell Ascanta and a Braid. For now a Growing Rites, that's acceptable. Yeah, I think I'll go for the Rebuilding now. So that's going to draw one card, since we milled one land. And draw another one. So, not the best hit rate, but not going to complain about drawing two cards. Got a bit of removal to keep connecting with Obika. Maybe take out that champion. Still within range of an abrade. Trigger again, this time not hitting any lanes. And a languish. Nice one sided board wipe. Would shrink down Obika. So I think I still prefer just to braid the champion. And then play Ascanta, so we actually get the benefit from our commander. And then maybe next turn Languish. So, can surveil a bunch, go for the throats. I guess I wouldn't mind drawing, but we already have a Languish in hand. Let's be greedy. Just fill the graveyard for Ascanta. Don't need steam vents. And a uh, Dragon Master Outcast can maybe trigger next turn. Although I may not want to expose it to my own languish. So we can wait a turn. So yeah, the plan next turn is to languish and then outcast. Ideally attack before casting languish. Although I guess we can't both make our dragon tokens and then not have our outcast die to our own languish in a way. So we'll see. Opponent runs out Hamza. So can discount their creatures perhaps. And a Prismari command can go. Even though there's a way to maybe finish off Hamza after we languish. Now Virtue of Persistence can do that too. Okay, so... How do we want to do this? Maybe Virtue the Aspirants. So Obika gets to connect. We'll play the Outcast to make extra dragons. Although maybe I want to time warp. So I get an extra turn. And then next turn we can Outcast and get a bunch of dragons. If our opponent is still around. The boots doesn't seem needed. And should be close to transforming Ascanta. Drancosaur is a good one. So cast Time Warp, take an extra turn. Have to discard a few lands to hand size. And all right, her opponent has seen enough, unfortunately. So next turn, the plan was to maybe once again attack with Obika after playing Outcast, which would net us at least two Dragon Tokens. Potentially a reason to keep the boots as a way to uh, increase Obika's power by one, so we get three dragon tokens instead. But then either way, we would still have the mana to either maybe cast a Cruel Ultimatum or a Nicol Bolas, 
which is also likely to prompt a concession. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Tameshi. And uh, sure, we can try this missing black mana, but we get to surveil, and then the boots, a great way to try and get in with Obika. And we'll keep a shipwreck marsh. Play that now in case we draw another black source to play Fraxen Arena next turn. And call against commands should also be effective against an artifact heavy deck. Alright, so I'll just cast it now. Destroy an artifact, make them discard. Try to slow them down a little bit. And then I might want to play Chandra before playing Obika so we can actually use Chandra's mana to equip the boots. Currently don't have any effect that benefits from an extra upkeep, so I really want to get this Phyrexian Arena in play first. Now as foretold, could also help. But we'll start with Chandra, just deal two for now. Bitter Blossom would have been nice, but don't have the mana to cast it. Okay, so next turn... If we draw a land, we would have seven mana potentially which is still not quite enough to do everything we want, and our opponent takes out Chandra anyways. Okay, so now I'm thinking Phyrexian Arena. And then I can still draw off the clue token, and then next turn maybe get an attack in with Obika. Opponent does have a Blast Zone with one counter, so could technically destroy the boots, but don't see that happening anytime soon. And a Confounding Conundrum, good card against fetch lands as well, so we'll have to be a little careful there. And uh, good against green ramp decks, of course. We do a Feed the Swarm, which can also blow up enchantments, but I don't think Conundrum's such a priority. Out of the way, so returning our Frexen Arena to hand. Yeah, that happens. And then end of turn we can draw. All right, so once again, Obika doesn't do a whole lot if we play it here. So instead, we can double spell As Foretold and Phyrexian Arena. And then As Foretold is a great way to cast all the extra spells we'll draw from Phyrexian Arena and Honden. Opponent does still have three mana up, so they likely have a counter spell for Obika. I do not have a great way to enable Revolt for Fatal Push, so I think we just try and cast the Honden and then maybe feed the Swarm Tameshi. Maybe it's fine if they counter Obika, and then we'll just replay it later, as opposed to Honden getting countered. Yeah, I could see that working out too since we're currently drawing extra cards, whereas the opponent is not. So if they counter here, I think uh, that's fine. We'll just take out Tameshi. And keep it going. Invasion of Ravnica. Okay, don't see that one every day. Gets rid of our Frex in Arena. That's too bad. So now we could play Obika, equip it with the boots, and then if we connect three extra counters on As Foretold, it lets me play Honden. So that seems worthwhile. Never mind. Opponent with a Get Lost also would have hit an enchantment, so could have taken out our Honden. So back to the command zone with Obika. The uh, map tokens could be a good way to enable Revolt on Fatal Push as well. For now, Teferi can also phase out Obika, prevent us from connecting. Alright, Portal to Phyrexia is close to getting cast. 
So this is the only play we can really make here. Time to improvise. So next time Obika gets answered, we maybe let it go to the graveyard to bring it back with portal. Our opponent with a lot of removal. And now Tomb of the Infinite, a good way to provide discard fodder for Teferi. And if they're lucky, they could hit some good interaction too. Okay. Well, I can cast a Bika thanks to As Foretold, and then try and get an attack in that way. The fetch line again will have to be careful with Confounding Conundrum, so I can play it now and then sack it in the opponent's turn. Equip the boots. And our opponent's gonna phase out with Teferi. Alright, so we'll just play Honden. And pass it back. Bloodstaymire is a way to enable Revolt on Fatal Push at least. So it could work out if they replay Tameshi. It's gonna be the Bath Song to draw and discard a bunch. and discarding a salt strobe which they got from their Tome of the Infinite. Time to improvise. The fairy activating before they use Tome, so they're probably planning to cast something more expensive here. I think I still fetch with Bloodstain Mire, even though I could keep it as a revolt enabler. Conundrum just makes things awkward. And our opponent's gonna respond by taking out another enchantment, it seems. Divide by zero, bouncing Honden. That's fine. As foretold, let's just replay it for free, essentially. And now the coast might finally be clear to attack with Obika. And a Temporal Anchor seems fine. We'll deal one to Teferi, so if they want a minus, that's the last activation they'll get. So I can equip the boots if I'd like. Although to be honest, our opponent's likely to just use the fairy anyway. And then I guess I should cast my things before attacking. So get a free Honden. And then go to attackers, or I could still play a temporal anchor first. Then our opponent's definitely gonna minus the fairy. But I think that's fine. And yeah, even if I equipped first, her opponent can still pay the ward. Ooh, Fading Hope. I guess there was a reason to equip the boots after all. Alright, back to hand you go. Their opponent keeps digging. They'll have Teferi available to mess up Obika once again. But we do have two Hondans, so this now deals two damage potentially. And the rest can take Portal. And there's Tameshi. Can't sacrifice a map token, so Revolt will not be enabled yet. But uh, should be able to make something happen next turn. So we get two damage. We'll shoot that at the ferry. Slow down. And then we want to scry to the bottom to get extra cards from Anchor. And then draw two, finding a Charmbreaker Devils and a Negate. All right, so we should be in a pretty good spot. I can play Obika just by paying 4 mana. Since we have more expensive cards, we can play for free. Equip the boots. They can still pay the ward. 
and minus with the ferry. But then Teferi's gone, so that happens. And then I can still play a free Charmbreaker Devils. And move the boots onto the Devils. Sack a map to enable Revolt. Don't need Vessel. Push Tameshi. And then attack. And then as foretold also discounts in the opponent's turn. So that can keep up negate. So we can still play Guardian Idol here if we'd like. Obika still phased out, so if they cast a board wipe, it'll survive. And then next turn we can finally make it happen. Although our opponent might just be dead to the Charmbreaker Devils attacking. And Bath Song shuffles some removal back. Opponent now with Urza's Silex. Hmm. Well, that's definitely worth countering. Reason not to have played Guardian Eye last turn is if our opponent hit 4 Spike, since then we won't be able to pay for it. But this has to go. And our opponent explodes, alright, so next turn we get to untap. And sadly, don't get to experience the extra upkeeps, but just from all the value we gain from our artifacts and enchantments here, we should be in great shape. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Ariette, the Beguiler, another new addition here. And our hand seems fine. We can surveil to maybe hit our third land drop, but in the meantime Signet and Power Stone can ramp. And I want to get probably a blue-red land. Could always Lightning Bolt here if needed. We'll get Thundering Falls, and Firemind Vessel could be alright actually, as more mana acceleration. So play Signet, keep a Bolt, although yet is a 4-4. And opponent with an Ascendancy now. Don't quite remember what this one does. I guess they just want to go up the curve, making spirit tokens in the process. Okay. Now we can play Vessel. Want to set up our mana first instead of running Obika into a removal spell. And we definitely don't want Ariat stealing Obika if we can help it. Okay, Nicol Bolas now an option too. So if I just play Shieldred here, opponent will be forced to sack Ariette, which is pretty decent, or we can use Nicol Bolas to take it out, which is probably even better. As well, potentially untap with a Planeswalker. Shieldred doesn't have any creatures in the graveyard. Should we get to untap with that instead? So ideally we find some of our boots to give Obika haste. Our opponent can get lost. Nicol Bolas. And then now... Maybe go for Obika and some other cheaper spells. Could go for Call of the Ring as well. And then maybe explore. I'll explore once. Mana Drain's a good one. Opponent will know about it. Replace Ariat. Okay. So we have options, but uh, yeah, if we explore once again, 
make this a 4-7. Opponent could still double block, but then we take out Ariat. So that's still fine by me. Or we can finish off their blocker with a Lightning Bolt. Either way, it's probably fine to explore once again. Keeping blue mana available if possible. Alright, just hit a land. Might want to have an untapped land available. So let's start by attacking. Alright, opponent is going to just take the hit. So we get to trigger Call of the Ring a few more times. Find a Duress. And a Molten Collapse. Alright, so we've got answers aplenty. Check out their hand first. And they've got some good protection spells. Maybe take the uh, slip out the back, which is cheaper. And then Molten Collapse can hit Ariette. Can still play maybe a Worn Power Stone, keep up mana drain, but yeah, her opponent's already too far behind. All right, so we got to see additional upkeep steps with Obika. Again, it's not the most powerful commander out there, since it's a 4-drop that needs to survive and hit the opponent before it does anything, and then you also need the right upkeep cards to go with it. So again, not the most powerful card, but a lot of fun when it works, and uh, especially, I imagine, in multiplayer games, it's going to be easier to enable. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.